Esta semana en Yo Pude, Tú Puedes, Sofi tuvo el privilegio de entrevistar a Laura Hoff, la hija del mismísimo hombre de hielo Wim Hoff. So tell me how it is to be Wim Hoff's daughter. I told him he was crazy, eh? I love my dad. I love him to death. He has 26 world records. This is really what he does. He does the impossible. What he did is climb the Kilimanjaro in his shorts and about 70% reached the summit. Conoceremos su interesante historia. Just being exposed to the cold was very normal to me. There were moments that I was very afraid to lose my father. I, I lost my mother already when I was eight. What are we doing here? Y aprenderemos los poderosos resultados del método Wim Hof. We bring down the inflammation with this method. Si quieres cambiar tu mente y tu salud, no puedes perderte este episodio. La hija del hielo, Laura Hof. En Yo Pude, Tú Puedes. Welcome to another episode of Yo Pude Tu Puedes podcast. Today we have an amazing, amazing guest, Laura Hoff, the ice woman. She is the daughter to Wim Hoff, the ice man. She is a biohacker, a nutritionist, a holistic therapist. <laughs> and she has an amazing community of women um, called the ice woman community, right? Welcome, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, so tell me how it is to be Wim Hof's daughter. Tell, tell me about your childhood. <laughs> yeah, this is so funny because it's a question that I get asked a lot. Sure but I have no idea what it is. It's something else. No, my, you know, he has been my father my whole life. So yeah, I don't know any better. I only found out later that he's a little bit different <laughs> than <laughs> other fathers. fathers. Right, right. Uh, but my childhood has been amazing. I really have a dad that always was playing around. Um, very much in tune with nature, very much following his own path, his own inner truth, so to speak. And that means that, yeah, he also taught me, I think, very beautiful values, just really listening to your essence, listening to yourself, following your own path. And that has served me quite amazing. Yeah. How so? Um, well, anything, anything in life, there's always choices to be made, right? The choices you make in life this decide which life you have. And I think my father really instilled in me the, the power just to be able to decide for myself, to block out any noise. If it is society, your school teacher, your friends, what, so anything that tells you which path you should go towards because you will be more successful, have more money. Da, 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 da. My father always taught me, no, 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 you think for yourself. That's the most important thing to do from the, heart. It, from the heart. And if you're happy, that's all that matters. And this really has served me so well, so many times. Yeah. In life. And I can tell you're like such a genuine, happy person. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Like literally, I was telling my parents, I picked her up from the airport yesterday and we talked <laughs> all the way through, like from yeah. the airport all the way to the hotel, <laughs> just laughing and talking, yeah. such a genuine, like, Happy person. You too. Thank you. Yeah, you too. So you were exposed to uh, cold, the cold showers yes. or dipping into the cold rivers yeah. since you were young, right? Yeah, I mean, we always went into nature. In Holland, it's cold yeah. most of the time. And we have very cold winters, super uh, yeah, snowy. So it's just all, all white. And, and any time... Every, t every day, pretty much, we went out into nature and just playing, playing outside. My father went doing his yoga poses in his shorts, of course. And you, as a child, you follow. Sometimes I also just went dipping with him. Yeah. Uh, not always, but sometimes I did. And so just being exposed to the cold was very normal to me. Right. I, I remember that I had no idea when a season began and a season ended. And so we never listened in my home. We never listened to the weatherman. Oh, we right. just listened to whatever you feel. So whenever you felt the cold, that was the moment you asked for a jacket, yeah. you know. And I still remember two times that a, a teacher told my father, listen, your <laughs> daughter needs a jacket. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just not feeling cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were so fine. I was fine. Yeah. So you yeah. don't need a jacket. Really? Yeah. I still remember 14 years old. I, w I wore a tank top all the <laughs> way yeah. through winter. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it was like a, a, a girl. She was a little... But she told her, why are you... With an attitude. Why are you wearing a tank top? Why are you not wearing right. a jacket? It's like, I thought it was so funny. Why is she asking yeah, me Yeah. Why does she care? Why, why does she care? But also, 
I just don't feel the cold. But that was the moment I felt, okay. So, that you felt like my dad is um, different in a good way. Different, but, yeah. I still remember the moment that I was like eight, uh, super winter. Everything was white. And I was at the schoolyard waiting with my friends for our parents to pick us up from school. And of course, all these parents wore winter boots and big jackets and wands. And then comes my father <laughs> in his shorts, right. Hawaiian shirts, and his flip flops. And then doing some yoga. That's so in, funny. On the school. Yeah, but this is this is just my childhood. Literally. So, so I, I I just don't know any better. This is just really my father. And everybody sometimes they they told him he was crazy. Eh? Yeah. He was a lovely personality. Every, everybody loved him, but they thought he was a, a little bit of a peculiar guy. Well, yeah. For those of you who don't know, Wim Hof has ran a half marathon across. The Arctic Circle barefoot, <laughs> wearing only shorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I am underneath ice for 60, 66 meters. Yeah, 66 meter, one uh, meter thick of ice. Oh my God. And it's crazy. It's crazy. He ran a full marathon in a desert as well without drinking any water. Without drinking any water. He has 20 Guinness World Records. He says 26 world records we fact check them i said okay dad you have 21 guinness world records 21 dad <laughs> not 26 21 21 but he's uh he's an amazing guy really and the one that is really really crazy to me is the one where he climbs the kilimanjaro shirtless right well actually what he did is climb the kilimanjaro and usually it takes about five days and about 70 percent reach the summit Okay. And it has to do with acute mountain sickness, so high altitude. Uh, and he said, you know what? I want to do it in record time. Oh, I wanted to do it in three days. And they, the doctors and uh, this, this Maasai, they were like, no, 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 we cannot do it. That is too irresponsible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually what he did, he brought 26 other people. Oh, my with God. different conditions. They had cancer. We had people with 67, 67 years old and almost couldn't walk anymore i mean crazy crazy and, and wow. every person that said i want to join you my father was like come join wow <laughs> wow wow what a story crazy 26 people so with cancer and like different All heavy conditions different heavy okay. conditions yeah wow, wow, wow. completely untrained and he said you do have to train for it so they trained okay and then they said three days and no doctor wanted to join him because they all thought he was super irresponsible. People are going to die. Yeah, like how dare you? Yes. And so he brought them up and they did it in two days, actually. Climbed the summit Kilimanjaro in two days. All 26 of them. 26 of them. Wow, the power of the mind. That is the power of the mind. This is what my father really has. He has belief. And when you have belief, you just make a decision. And that decision is going to come true. Yeah. That's just it. There is no what or what ifs or whatever what it is no you believe and if that belief is very strong you will you will conquer anything in life that you want this is really what he does he does the impossible and he has done that many 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 times many different things my craziest feats actually of him i think sitting in a bucket of ice for two hours okay that's a crazy one nobody was doing that in, right. at that right. time or ever who does that right well, hours, or two like, hours nobody yeah. but he was just breaking his own record every time uh, such control but my favorite one is really the the mount everest tell us climbing the mount everest in his shorts without any oxygen oh up God. until the death zone 7200 meters and for me that is the one that nobody's going to do that oh. anymore you know so that, if, to me, is the craziest. Uh, how do you feel about, like, your dad doing all these extreme things? Yeah. Like, were you ever scared or... Yes, yes absolutely. absolutely. I mean, really. And you have to understand, in my house household, my father was sort of the kid. Right. Know? So <laughs> we talked to him, like, you know, like, he yeah. calls. It was like, yeah, you do, don't do it. One time he climbed a very big, steep rock, about 200 meters, and he did it without any rope. And he wanted to do it again. And I said to my father, no, you're not. And I was like 11, maybe 10, maybe 11, like super young. You're not going to do it. I was super scared, super right, scared. But he just did it anyway. He did it. he did it anyway and only told us after. So there were moments that I was very afraid to lose my father. 
And it's logical because I, I lost my mother already when I was eight. Yeah. And um, I think that was really the moment that my father began into those extreme feats just to get his mind off uh, of the death of my mother. Uh, so I think without the death of my mother, really, everything what is happening now, I wouldn't sit here. It has been such an impactful event in my life. But it also meant that I was extra careful about my dad. Very protective. Very protective. I love my dad. I love him to death, really. Yeah, it makes so much sense. So what advice would you give to people listening yes. um, that have lost a loved one? And how do like, do you feel like you will overcome? Yeah, to be honest, great... I think with this um, method, what it really does is it makes it uh, easier to handle with grief. Right. Huh? Because it, it, you come to a more balanced point of yourself. You begin to understand what life is all about. And that also means that grief is part of life. So suffering is part of life. Um, and of course, you don't want to lose a loved one. But if it happens, it's much easier to do it. We have people with depression, people that also have been going through the most craziest times. And it is a method, I, I believe that make sure that you have the tools to handle anything, any stress, anything in life with, with just much more ease. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you do that. You, feeling is understanding, really. Right. You do these breathing exercises. You come to much more alignment of yourself. The conditioning just falls away. And you, you just align with the core of yourself, even on a soul level. And from the soul level, Everything is actually, yeah, it, it, there is a purpose to everything. I so, love it. So, okay, so you have a community of women. Yeah. Talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah. But I, I wanted to dip um, and also just create a community for women mm -hmm. that they feel comfortable enough. Because if we think about the method, I uh -huh. always think about my father. You're right. And yeah, like, yeah. they're just men. men. Right. Ears. And so it can be a little bit intimidating. For women, yeah. I think this woman is an amazing tool. Mm -hmm. really. We have these different cycles that we work, that we're in, especially the hormonal cycle, right? Menstrual cycle. And really, women have much more stressors actually to deal with. So I'm doing more research into this, this woman, understanding myself as a woman, never saw myself as that, you know, being raised by a man. Right. But women have so much benefit of doing these uh, techniques just by regulating their hormones already. That's just okay. resetting these, the, your hormonal cycle, making sure again, going to that balance point. And that is nervous system, hormonal system. And that is one of the biggest and most important things for women. Yeah. That's, I mean, I have so many friends that are into the hormonal balancing because it really is horrible when your hormones are out of whack. Yeah. Um, what have you learned about, like you said, you were doing some research about how it affects women? Well, a lot. I mean, we have these stressors, of course. This is mental stress, emotional stress. Uh, this is also just these expectations that women have to live with. Uh, we have much more stressors in our life. Second thing is all of these toxins that we're exposed to. Uh, so, so women just have many more different triggers for them to be off balance huh? these hormonal uh, being off balance they have more um yeah with this method i uh, we know we're regulating it and mm -hmm. we do it in a very profound effective quick manner so for mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing we have so many uh, women with different stories endometriosis for example is a very specific woman issue uh -huh. and it has to do with inflammation outside of the uterus now we bring down the inflammation with this method very quickly yeah. Then this hormonal balancing, it just makes sure that women, yeah, stay in this. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. For any women listening, like, yeah. just so you know, your hormones yeah. can be regulated yeah. by ice. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. By it's amazing. ice. By ice. <laughs> also, this uh, breathing exercise. And the breathing. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, the mindset is very important. Right. Women have it's a the different three brain. Yeah, You're right. It's really. And women have a different brain. So what you see is that we actually are, have a great entry point, very quick connection with our amygdala. It's our fear center. 
Yes. So we're more anxious. Most of the time, they are a little bit more anxious. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but when they're in, it flushes away. Amazing. Yeah. So there's there are differences that are just nice to know. Right. Uh, and uh, this method really touches up on a lot of different issues for women. Yes. So I'm writing a book now together with my sister. And it will come out next uh, next year. But I'm so excited for it because it's going to help so many. What's the name? You don't have it You'll yet. have to. <laughs> you don't you'll have to. Announce it yet, but you'll have to wait and you'll <laughs> see it. Yeah, Laura's Instagram, I'm assuming. Well, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a big uh, announcement. Really? Yeah, it will. Yes. Awesome. It's going to be a big release. Then let me know worldwide. so I can, can post it on my socials as yeah, well. Looking forward yeah. to reading I it. I wish I could <laughs> already give you uh, When do you copy? think it's going to be ready? Um, well, at the moment, it's going to be May 2025. 20, oh my gosh. In two months? No, 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 no. May 25th. So next year, next year. Oh, May of 2025. Got it. Okay, okay. In a year, in a year. <laughs> now I really have to write very quickly. <laughs> okay. Um, so just one last question, Laura. Um, what is your mission in life? My mission? I think my mission really is to just be a channel for yeah for god that's how i see it i want to give as much as i can um what i can in my way uh, and for me it's very important that people just really are themselves because that's when they are the most beautiful yeah. every time when i have a retreat and i have people going through these whole techniques and i i find them so beautiful each and every unique person and you can see that they are loving themselves more and that makes them give more also to the group. And for me, that's the most important. Be your authentic self. That's a great answer. Great answer. Thank you. And you, you are, are your authentic, authentic self. Thank it's you. It's amazing how you can just tell when well, someone's with authentic. A, with... <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like an amazing father. I love him. Yeah. Really, I love him to death. I mean, he's so pure. His, yeah. his, his being is so pure. That's what I love about him. He's not perfect. Well, no one is. He's, no, no one is. But he's also beyond perfect. <laughs> but what he really is, is pure. And that purity is important. It's, so important. it's important. Yeah. And I love that about him. I've, I've been told like that he's super down to earth. Yeah. He's not like, oh, I'm one half. Like, don't talk to me. You know, no, like, no, he's no, like. No, he's, he's a normal person. Right. A very... He's a normal person. And he has nothing of that he doesn't have any security or this or that and and sometimes people say that he should but it's just not his kind of spiel yeah. you know he had like a beautiful this was so funny and very typical of my father he had the most fanciest of uh, uh events uh -huh. and of course he was sort of a guest of honor uh, but all he wanted to do is just going back and eat a cup of noodles. All right. In that like this instant noodles. I was like, that's a funny one again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's so, not into the whole like bougie, like he doesn't candle care. life. He doesn't and... care at all. You know, for him, it's like I take my guitar, just play around. His mission is very pure. Yes. I mean, for him, it's very important. What are we doing here on, on this earth? We're helping people. I love it. Huh? We're helping people, making sure that we can go and grow to the next uh, leap of consciousness. And when we can do that, we all grow together. That's really what we're doing here. Yeah. So so that's, I love that about him. And in that, I support him however I can. Yeah. I love him. And uh, yeah, that's also my mission in some way. Yeah. He, he, I can tell he really influenced you in Whoa, many ways. So thank you. That's amazing. I think I influenced him as well. I'm by sure the way. you did. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, where can people find you, um, and Wim on socials or website, whatever you go to wimhoffmethod.com. We have an amazing app as well. Online courses. Great app. What's the name of the app? Also Wim Hof Method. Also Wim Hof Very Method. Very easy. Okay. Yeah. And you can find me on Instagram, Laura Hoff Alchemy. Yeah. There you go. Wow. <laughs> I had it memorized. Right. And, and then, then Wim, Wim Hof, Hof is just, just Wim Hof, right? Yeah. yeah. I think Instagram is Iceman Hoff. Thank you so much, Laura. This was amazing. Thank you. It's going to impact so many Latinos. Thank We're going to put so some much. subtitles in Spanish. And <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for you so being much. here. Thank you. Yes. Bye.